Hello, hello, Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having a fabulous day. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And in these crazy times we find us, we all need to be self-educated because if we're not, the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And when you look around the world, it becomes plainly obvious that the people speaking the loudest um, are telling us things that are not exactly true. And so today I wanted to have a look at uh, some mud floodage. A bit of evidence uh, that there was a huge devastation around the world. Um, as far as we can tell, you know, around the sort of 14, 1500s, maybe 1600s. And what we're looking at here in front of us, this is actually the Louvre. So this is uh, Paris in France. And you can see a massively oversized building. These are people. Um, you can see it's mud flooded as well. We've got windows here going straight into the ground. But this bank, look at this bank. So this is a man-made canal. You know, they've got this bridge, uh, stone bridge they've built over it. Then they've got this other wood bridge in front massive build out in the background um, but what they couldn't do the edges of this canal because this is clearly a man-made canal so that to me looks like a bit of evidence of the mud flood uh, maybe that you know they just haven't had a chance to clean that out yet but again look at this build out of this city so this is France and this is Sixteen, well, it doesn't say um, 1600s, so let's go halfway, about 1650s. Uh, Paris, France, completely built out with castles, spires, rock bridges, the whole lot, and looks like a bit of mud floodage. So let's jump in and have a look at some more evidence of inundation. And here's a shot to start with. This is from 1870. Not exactly sure where it is, but it does say Bastion up here. So it looks like they're saying this is part of a fort. And as you can see, uh, archways, look at this, archways, you know, way down. You can see the size of these people here. This guy's standing up. So what do we got? You know, sort of one, two, two and a half for him so what's that 20 foot or something no 15 16 feet under the ground these arches um you know just completely inundated you can see this see this looks like a wall that's been faced and across here as well and here we have this corner still with the bricks and that's that's very star 40 the what that way that corner's built uh brick you can see this is all brick construction of course, a big tower here that's been destroyed uh, with huge, huge doorways going into basically what is now underground, but what used to be uh, part of this star. And it looks like they may have dug all this stuff out of here with their little shovels, so they're definitely working hard. Though these guys look like they're actually posing for a music video. And look at this tower in the background. Uh, looks like the glass has been blown out of it. And these trees, see how they're all dead. Now what would happen? I mean, you can almost see the layer there, can't you? The top of the roof of whatever this was, this fort. Um, but these trees, I'd say they've been buried. You know, so the normal base would be down here. And then they've been buried by mud. And when that happens, basically they start to rot and stuff and it kills the tree. So that's why they're all dead. And here we have a book. This is from 1615. Illustrations uh, of something. Um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Travels of the Holy Land. Let's have a look. Uh, so uh, discoveries uh, in Jerusalem antique modern Palestine there we go I didn't 
even though it was called Palestine back then. And here we have our, of course, um, <laughs> apparently religious people with their crosses and all their symbolism, the twin towers here, the twin pillars, and even a little pope hat. And just everything you know that we see everywhere, anchors, the three fleur de lis up here again, the crown, the wreaths, always the same. Alright, so this is a map that we're given. Look at all the fleur de lis everywhere. And you can just see this is just a big, massive, walled city. And look at this. Actually, this may be Egypt. Mediterranean Rama. Okay, so I think this actually is Egypt. And that's why we have a pyramid in there. Uh, this is some fancy man with his big hat and fleur de lis everywhere. He's got his Knights of Malta cross on, um, all his regalia, and big, big castles in the background. And of course, here's all the uh, the uh, religious men, shall we say, the whisperers, and they're all around the Queen whispering in her ears and she's always sitting in like one of these sort of portico type things isn't she you know like where we see the statues uh, yeah and yeah all the religious men this is what happens they get around and they all influence the leaders to do um their bidding basically they turn the tables so these people think they're in control but they're really being controlled now this says venice Look at that. So this is obviously water, and we have, look at this, this looks like a star fort, or at least uh, a citadel of a star fort, and we've got, you know, towers on these islands and stuff, all built out. And this is Venice, this would be the Grand Canal here, and completely built out, and I don't know, I, I haven't seen this breakaway to wall, uh, breakwater, sorry, wall before. Um, so I'm not sure what happened to that, but you can see a big break of water to uh, stop the ocean coming in and flooding out Venice. Obviously didn't work too well. Uh, this is a cool picture, Tr Tremity. And look at this, star fort sitting out there on an island. Looks like we've got, um, probably just farming there, we've got a few towers and things, but just shows you like the water levels have definitely changed at some point. Now this, you see a lot of uh, Le Mont de Gargan. This, this doorway going straight into a hill. And of course, uh, if you've been following this channel and other channels, you'll know that that's not a hill. That's gonna be a building that's been covered in mud, basically, and dirt. And so this is a doorway, and now it looks like it goes into a hill. So here we have uh, the island of Jaffa. And again, same scenario, apart from the fact that this is all mud flooded and devastated, you know, broken buildings coming down the hill here, up the top, poking out of this um, you know, hill, what should we call it, covered building. Uh, we've got the top of it and then down underneath, we've got the bottom of it and the doorway is still there and going into, into the building that looks like it's now a hill. And again here, just bits popping out all over the place that have been mud flooded. Here's a picture of Rama. As you can see, we've got some nice palm trees, very big palm trees. And just, oh well, uh, walls, domes, towers, the whole lot. Even up here, the Islamic, what we're told is the Islamic half moon. And this building here, see the mud at the front of it? all covered you can see the walls they're all covered as well you know I mean so I don't know if these walls were meant to keep the mud out but I would think you'd have to build them pretty quickly wouldn't you um, unless they knew that something was coming uh, here again uh, old world buildings covered and doorways kind of going in to the hills into the old buildings and just the top of them just destroyed um, that's not the best picture that one I'll leave the link to this book in the description as well. 
here again. See how they're all, all the walls, I guess. All the uh, dirt's just heaped up against them. More buried buildings. And we see this in, in the cities, don't we? You know, where this used to be a flat building and now the, the mud's come down and made a hill. You know, covering half the building, basically. Uh, and this is just, yeah, what they turned up in to see. And of course, you know, the, all these drawings are drawn by someone who's, who's, you know, obviously the people who are now in control who have been out surveying and finding out what's out there and then basically taking it over. And as you can see this wall here just completely going into the ground. Mud flooded, all these little bits, tops of buildings and towers sticking out of, of mud. You know, and you can just see the way it's drawn. Just looks like a big mud flow. But of course, yeah, this wall bit, nothing inside it, so... Did they know? Did they have precognition? And this is what Jerusalem used to look like. So there you see Jerusalem uh, in antiquity, or antique. It's got the moat around it and just a complete old world built out city. Uh, aqueducts, the whole lot. A few buried buildings on the outside and this again doesn't look very mud flooded. And this is interesting, this pipe thing with water coming out of it. I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, that's Jerusalem. A walled city. And this I find interesting. This is, um, you know, a, a drawing. It's not a design or a plan or anything. It's just a drawing of the floor plan of a, a cathedral, obviously. We've got a dome here. Another half dome down here. But just looking at that, does that look more like, you know, the design for a, a building? Or does that look like some kind of schematic for a machine or a, you know, a circuit board or something. It's just looking at it, that looks very machine-like, doesn't it? So yeah. So I won't go through all these pictures, but uh, I'll leave you the link so that you can check them out yourself. And of course, what do we have down here? You know, a bit of a, bit of a mark to let us know who has come in and claimed all of this. So this is what that building looked like from the inside. This is the dome. All the pillars, as we see everywhere. And of course, big hole in the center. And here's another picture. Now this is uh, Pontiff. Oh, maybe that's where the Pope used to live. Um, but we get this. I'm not sure what that is. It looks a bit like a coffin. Maybe this is Dracula's lair. Uh, but this tunnel. Now it says, um, picture of the monument now of course we've got this um, you know checkered floor but this looks to be underground now is this what all these underground tunnels are just buried buildings and I'm talking as far as underground bases even dumbs you know because when we look around the further back we go the bigger things get and uh, the further underground they seem to get you know so is this all this stuff underground is this just um, yeah, the, the old world that's been buried and all these tunnels are just literally this. They're just man-made buildings that have been buried. Um, you know, because we have so many stories of, you know, things underground and going on underground. And as you can see in this picture, you know, this popping out the top, you know, what's underneath here? This is the thing. And this as well. See this doorway here? Going straight into, you know, what looks like a hill and again here. I think that one is, that might just be an archway, but this one... But this one's definitely going straight into the mountain, or into, you know, a buried building. And this is called the Sepulcher. Dome, dome. Uh, these holes going into the ground. Look at that. So there's obviously something underneath here, top of a dome or something. And again, you know, how many of these are all over the earth buried that are actually huge buildings underneath us? Because you know, we know that we're walking on history, but are there are there people using that history, those historical buildings? And this looks like it's inside that dome. You can see the hole. 
a bit like Indiana Jones, you know, when he got in the underground um, you know, cavern, he had his little staff and his crystal and the, the light shone through and showed him where the burial was. And you know that, and there was a lot of drops in that as well, wasn't there? In Indiana Jones, you know, they just jump underground, and there's these all these buildings under there. And clearly, you know, he was jumping in, and these were huge buildings under the ground. Back in Indiana Jones in 1984, and then of course, the famous last scene where they whack the Ark into a box, and it just goes into a warehouse to be to be stored. You know, out of the way, out of the minds of, of yeah, the everyday peoples. And more devastation. And as you see, every picture pretty much, it's just showing the same story. Mud flows and buried old world buildings. Is really all we get. And here again, a doorway. It's half buried and going straight into what looks to be a hill but we can see with these bits sticking out here that this is a buried building and so all underneath here is now buried and they come along and they build on top of it so what actually is underneath us and here's another one I mean look at that is that is this what mines are that looks like a mine doesn't it again I'll just show you a few more pics of this uh, because this one, I mean, obviously looking very um, Roman in Egypt. Uh, this sort of shows the scene and the mud flood devastation. But, I mean, just everything. And the way it's drawn, it just looks like mud flow, doesn't it? Like something's flowed down everywhere. It doesn't look like rocky mountains. I uh, hear more doorways going straight into the ground. Top of something poking through. Bit of, you know, debris. And this is all uh, around, yeah, Israel. Ah, there you go, there's another plan for you. Again, you know, looking, that one looks a bit more building-like, but just, you know, some of these features, you know, what are they? Very machine-like. Now, this picture here, look, like, this looks to be completely underground. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, all these buried buildings. You know, are these all the, the caves and caverns and mines and everything? And I think this is a picture I was looking for. And you can see this is just completely, you know, inundated. And these buildings here, um, basically are completely under the ground when you look at the, the level up here. This one's got dirt on the roof. But they've been excavated out. And this one's up on, up on a, you know, base of dirt. I'm not sure where the bottom of this one is. It's just sticking out. But these have clearly been, you know, they, these have been excavated just in this muddy landscape, you know, bits just sticking out. Every every hill's just got, you know, the top of a building sticking out of it. So this is what's happened, and, and people have come along and dug it all out, or dug half of it out, <laughs> and claimed it as their own, and brought in new populations uh, to be the workers, basically. This is a book from uh, 1714. And this is uh, in, a, in and around Egypt. This is Constantinople. And look at the size of this place. Check out all of these spires. Look at them. They're just everywhere. The whole place is walled right up to the water. Now, old world cathedrals. Looks like an aqueduct. Um, just completely, completely built out. Look at that, even a castle in the water in the 1700s. And this is the kind of architecture that they had. I mean, look at this. How did these people build it? Apart from the size, you know, look at these people, they're miniature. But just look at everything, all the domes, arches, glasswork up here, stained glass, no doubt. Just ridiculous and this is an interesting pick this says temple of uh, Chalcedona but <laughs> look at that I'm not sure if that's like you know a house or temple that's got like a, an earthen roof or if it's been buried and they've just dug it half of it out so you can get into it because it's definitely covered in something earth mud down here, uh, you know, as you do, just the top of a castle turret, just 
sticking out of the ground. And again, just to show you the whole old world, you know, the whole world, you know, four or five hundred years ago was completely built out in this old world architecture, you know, castles, turrets, spires and everything. And most of it is now under our feet as far as we can work out. You can see massive walls just everywhere. And these are massive constructions. Look at the size of these boats compared to them in the background, you know, in the distance. And aqueducts are... Uh, Ortidoto, I'm not sure if that's a town or if that means aqueduct. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, I'm not sure, but look at that aqueduct, double story. You know, why not? Look at the size of it. You know, apart from the construction and the design, imagine how much materials went into creating that. And, and you've got to understand that these have to have a, you know, a gradient so that they're always flowing downhill just slightly and they do this over hundreds of miles you know over mountains across rivers they, they don't care they just go anywhere with these things old world lighthouse here looking very antiquity and here we have uh, no doubt some of the ruling class look at that for a headdress now why <laughs> um, is this tech um, and also is it hiding a large head maybe Look at the work that's gone into this and, you know, what can we make today? Baseball caps. You know, and this is the thing, where did they store these? Who cleaned them and made them, you know, because you can imagine how much effort would go into keeping that you know, dust free and clean. A few more very large head wraps. It looks like they got plants coming out of them. You know, she's, I don't know, it's kind of gypsy looking, isn't she? But not, you know, this is, we're sort of told this is, you know, uh, Arab and, and Islamic and stuff, but she doesn't really look like an Islamic Arab type person. Uh, now this dude, he has a very cool hat. He's gone all flying nun on us, and I don't know, what do you reckon? Maybe he just like fell over and like head butted a, a, a bread roll and doesn't know it's there. <laughs> um, and this guy, you know, this is very sort of more traditional what we see these days. It's got the cool Mo. And so here, look, e Egypt and Syria. Does that look like what we're told was going on in Egypt in the 1700s? No, maybe Europe, but not Egypt, that's for sure. Uh, here we have some of the men smoking something. A bit of ganja, probably. I am playing chess and here are the women so the men smoke and play chess and the women drink tea and sit around and she says oh what a nice headdress you have and I'll just skip through some of these but this is just to show you look at this build out look at the side this double walled look at all these turrets and towers just everywhere uh, so this is Gallipoli so this is Turkey uh, this is a, yeah turrets I guess yeah Turkey Gallipoli uh, you know, buildings going into the walls. I mean, that looks like a modern city there, doesn't it? But then what do we find? Uh, what's this? Ruins of Troja. I wonder if that's Troy. Troy, because, you know, the, Troy, right? Uh, they tried to tell us that Troy uh, was just a myth until they found it in the 18, uh, sorry, 1950s or 60s. But that looks like it says ruins of Troy. So they knew about it in the 1600s, didn't they? And they just cover it all up. But look at this, just megalithic buildings have just been smashed. Here's some more just destroyed. So what, what has destroyed these? Obviously the mud flood hasn't done this. Uh, we obviously have melted buildings, so we're looking at plasma events as well. Could that have done this, or is this something else? I mean, just everywhere, just everywhere was these walled, you know, fairy tale type cities. Uh, some iguana. Okay, so here we have some people again. Tiny people living in a giant world. And we still do, guys. It's just 
all around us, we just don't recognize it. That's what we're starting to. Now this, I don't have it, there's no name, but just look at the size of this city. And of course, they tell us now, oh, 1600s, pretty much just towns, a couple of cities, not very big, but, but you know, this is what we get. This is what we get in books. You know, and if people are drawing this, I don't think this is, this is out of someone's imagination. You know, especially as we see it in so many different books. Oh, some more cool headdresses. Look at that. Big harbour built out into the water. Towers all the way along that way. That is cool. Uh, that is all oh, roads. Okay, so uh, that's where the Colossus was supposed to stand. Is that also where the first lighthouse was supposed to be? The light was it? Look, it was Colossus at Rhodes, wasn't it? But that looks like an old lighthouse. And there's no Colossus there. But then again, this is 1600s. Again, Rhodes completely built out. Look at that. And look at this tower in the middle there. Big, massive spire. What are these? Are these big tent things? Is this what they could build? Uh, but they claim all these cities. And also just, you know, like these boats. They're out there fishing in these little sort of boats, but they can build these apparently. Because, you know, they tell us that these people built this stuff. That's the narrative. And here's that tower. Bit of a closer look. Pretty cool. Ah, so here we go. Yeah, this is the Nile. These are the boats, and these are what people are living in. Now, these, again, are the same people that we are told built this. This person in this tent, you know, is supposed to be part of the same uh, civilization that built this. Even though these castles are no, you know, we don't see these, you know, fairy tale type turrets anymore in Egypt. They all got smashed, but. This is the narrative, you know, and we see it everywhere. You know, they can't even build a decent house, but history books attribute this to them. Just, you know, big old world buildings, and they're just, you know, grazing their cows there. This guy's just wondering who the hell built this building. Aquidoto. <laughs> Aquidoto. And of course, look at all the trees everywhere. You know, all this region is now pretty much desert. But look, not back then, trees everywhere. Yet they try and tell us it was, you know, desert forever. Okay, now it looks like we're back in the desert, <laughs> as I speak. Uh, Egypt, okay, three pyramids. What are these four pyramids? What happened to them? And, you know, bits of walls or something sticking out the ground. Again, just ruins, things that are smashed, things that are buried, just everywhere. And of course, uh, the pyramids now, aren't they looking a bit dilapidated? No doubt inside one of the pyramids. Woohoo! And this guy's got a candle. But as you'll notice, there's no soot on the roof, you know, and it's the same in all the pyramids and temples. So if they were going in and using only candles for light, then why isn't there hundreds or thousands of years of soot built up? Okay, there we go. That's <laughs> not the best drawing of the Sphinx I've ever seen, but I mean, look at the damage. So this has obviously all been repaired and replaced at some point. And look how wide that neck is a lot bigger than what, what we've got today. And again, look, four pyramids. There should be three. Well, actually, no, there is four. We get three main ones, don't we? And then, oh, actually, one's got another three coming off it, but really little ones. Um, but that looks like, yeah, I don't know. Okay, just, you know, this old world remnants. Look at these. Wow, man. I mean, come on, if they're not Antiquitech, what are they for? Because this is what people can build, right? <laughs> but they're doing this. Oh, water wheels. 
course, they stop the water, they stop the current, uh, the free energy current, and turns it into their current sea. Some more cool people, and again, this is Egypt. Is this what you expected to see in Egypt in the 1600s? Look at that hat. Oh, looks like someone's. It looks like a gumboot or someone's leg. Um, and wow, man, that is a cool three-string guitar, and he's playing it with a bow. How cool! I haven't seen that instrument before. And again, you know, tents, you know, bits of reeds, small boats next to this. And on the other side, all built out masonry. Wow, okay, so look at this pillar. That's huge. You can see the people here. You can see old ruins smashed everywhere and just big walled city in the background. Here we have a big hill with a bit sticking out the top, as we see everywhere. And just looks completely devastated, doesn't it? No trees. There's some in the background here. And you know, maybe they're inside the walls and got saved. But this pillar, we see these, you know, there's quite a few of these across the realm. Single pillars, huge pillars, just standing on their own. Why? Um, I, was, I heard that, uh, you know, obviously we know about Boaz and Jakim, the twin pillars, uh, the poles, opposite poles, energy, magnetics, all this kind of stuff. Were they the part of the power source of temples? Because you see them at the start, at the gates of, you know, or the entrances of temples and buildings a lot. And also twin obelisks. And so have they gone and taken one of the pillars away to turn off these buildings? Because here we see that we've got the twin ones. And just devastation. Look at this aqueduct has been just smashed. And yeah, aqueducts in Egypt, guys. They had it everywhere. Huge buildings, just, and look, staff what out in the ocean. So definitely something's been going on with the uh, water levels. And this is Alexandria, massive obelisk, covered in writing and symbols that we don't really know what they mean. You know, we get all these different versions and, and you know, academics still squabble over, you know, what different things mean, but do they know? Is this is this instructions of what this does? What an obelisk is, how to turn it on, what to do with it. Because why else would you build, you know, why else would you cover an obelisk in writing about, you know, why would you be telling a story about a king or something on this obelisk? It would make more sense that it's telling you about the obelisk. And just some, ah, uh, yeah, devastation, just so you can see that, you know, here's another obelisk, Egypt was the same as everywhere else. Look at these buildings, look at this pillar in the middle, standing on these radiating walls, and all these, the roof is just sitting on top of this one pillar. All these different angled domes. Now this is, this is pretty full on architecture. This is not easy to do. This looks like a well. So you've got a hole in the bottom. It looks like water comes down and then goes down into, I don't know, maybe this is the holding chamber who knows and again giant size destroyed buildings all in Egypt you know we're to told that none of this was here that it was just basically slaves and, and all they could really build was the pyramids and nothing else <laughs> which doesn't make a lot of sense look at the size of this doorway you know just oversized and again here guys always going straight underground into buried buildings so what's in there now is this where all the tech is kept underground another cool guitar so there you go um yeah i won't show you the whole book i'll leave the link in the description but i just sort of wanted to show you that you know this mud flood evidence is everywhere this is obviously you know we've looked at the middle east and the top of africa uh, but the other thing is the build out, you know, the story they give us is completely, you know, false. It's been um, falsified on purpose to lead us astray, uh, you know, so that we don't know what our true story is. And of course, you know, as we go back in time, the further back we go, the bigger things get. Uh, 
So what's underground? You know, how big is the stuff underground? Because we find so much buried. Is are there massive cities down there that, that, that are still being used by who knows who? Questions, questions. So there you go. Thanks for spending some time there, guys. I'll leave all the links below so you can check them out for yourself. Please leave me a like, comment, hit the bell if you want to be uh, notified of future uploads. And also, you'll find the link for Autodidactic 2 channel. If you haven't subscribed to that already, go across and subscribe. You'll find another 100 or so videos over there on uh, alternative history. And again, thank you for everyone who supports this channel in any way they can by liking, sharing, commenting, all that stuff. And a big thank you to everyone who's supporting me through PayPal, Patreon, and my merch store. Uh, it really, uh, basically, that's helping keep this channel going because uh, we all know what's going on. This is pretty much my only uh, job at the moment. So, yeah, any help is definitely hugely appreciated. And if you do want to help, you'll find the links below in the description. So, thanks for spending some time with me, guys. Have an amazing day, and I'll catch you all on the next upload. Bye for now.